afternoon. Welcome to another episode of Lots of Lobang. I am joined here today with a very special guest, returning guest, Mr. Rindo, or we call him AKA the Mayor. His Hello. podcast is uh, Living Up in Lion City, and I am Josiah, AKA the Bi Curious Boy. And, <laughs> and we have Deben, AKA the, the Lawyer. <laughs> no, 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 right, right. You're, you're not just going to gloss over that. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and beside Deben is uh, uh, Sean, AKA the White Chick. No, no, no. White Chick. White Chick. Sure. And Rindo. Yeah. See, this is the first time I've heard this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah his like, bi curiosity has uh, just been exhibited. <laughs> oh, he has just blurted it out. He must have Wait, seen yeah. a dick he really liked. So let, let me clarify. Let me clarify. This bi curiousness, is it uh, biracial or bisexual? Uh, bi- biracial. Um, it could be both. It could I, be I both. just want to explore. I want to explore. I think this. I want to get out of my shell. This all has to do with Scorsese, la. He he has this obsession with Scorsese, and every time he meets him, he's just willing to suck that man. No, but I'm willing, Scorsese, I'm that one is by species already. Yeah, because Wait, the man is always dead. By age, <laughs> by age, <laughs> by ageism. He like he liked fine wine. Yeah. yeah, the older you get, the more experienced you are. Yeah. So I need someone to teach me. Teach he's, me the ways. He's, he's never had white rambutan before. Teach me the ways of the world. Teach me the ways of the world. <laughs> like is, when your balls have white hair. <laughs> isn't the term for it pansexual though? Where like you're not picky at all? No, he doesn't agree <laughs> with that. He uh, has pan- only... Pans- no, Josie is picky. No, wait. Pa- oh, isn't, okay. isn't pansexual someone who has no sexual inclination towards no, any, it's, anyone? It's the guy that's who, asexual. Yeah, that's asexual. Yeah. Oh. Oh. It's like you have a sexual inclination to literally anything, anything. anyone. A- anything. So when you say pansexual, what you mean is I'm a whore. No, no, not really. Yeah, it, is that, it, I think is that what you're saying. <laughs> no, but even a whore might not fuck a goat. Yeah, right, so right. When you know why? Because a goat can't pay you money. Uh, yes, <laughs> that's why. That's also well, true. That's one thing, but I think also that's it happened why. when the guy just walked around and started to find everything like. No, but like, I want to fuck that. Would it be like, safe to say that, that a pansexual would actually like fuck this doorknob? Yeah, if it's a hole. It's, yeah, it's, it's, it's too high. A hole? It's too high. If it's a feet, uh, a foot lower, I think I might be able to doggy it. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right now I got this I got a tiptoe. Uh. It, it gets a little uncomfortable. Yeah. I, I my calves my uh, cramp. It can't up. be locked from the outside. I'm checking to see if he's got a stool in here somewhere. <laughs> if no, you turn no. the stool upside down, all of us can find oh, it. Oh no, if he was to if he were to load this box up with something inside, <laughs> just put it flat down, he would oh, yeah. yeah. Sometimes you gotta be uh you know, you gotta think outside the box. Yeah, never say creative. never say never. Never, never say, say never. never. Yeah. yeah, just Any like Michael Jackson. <laughs> was it Michael Jackson or Justin Bieber? Justin <laughs> <laughs> Is it Justin Bieber? Michael Jackson and Justin Bieber. And Justin Bieber. Yeah, <laughs> two pedophiles. Yeah. Oh. Hey, but but too bad they're not living the same uh, era though. I think too bad one isn't even living now. <laughs> <laughs> I think if Justin Bieber meets Michael Jackson, I think Justin Bieber might be his favorite. He might sing yeah, song. right. Because I mean, even even though the kid, oh, but actually now he's all tatted up and everything. No, but I think Michael Jackson. I is he into I think Michael Jackson is not into tats. Is he into boys or girls though? Because uh, if he's into boys, I don't think he like Justin Bieber. <laughs> with his with voice like that, he might be thinking this guy's a fag. No, but like Justin <laughs> this guy's Bieber. A Justin Bieber went through a whole like hyper masculine phase where he tried to be like super. Uh, you know, baritone. Oh, you know, yeah, he, he yeah. went all tattered up, and he was. I like, assume I was he man just man. went to puberty, though, <laughs> and that's why his uh, voice w- w- dropped uh, two octaves. <laughs> and then he's like, "Yeah, I'm here. I'm here, girls. I'm a real guy. I want. I I'm want to man. fuck chicks. I'm a man. I want to fuck chicks, man. And as a man, I've got to say I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. That's what's gonna make them wet. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, and, and and he also went. Uh, he no, but but I I pity Justin Bieber la. He he got like so fucking famous, so rich at such a yeah. young age. He went to Brazil and he fucked a tranny. Oh, did he? And the tranny took like snapshot, like Snapchats oh, and like pictures with him in bed. And then he had to come out, and he was like hanging around with Floyd Mayweather and all. Then after that, he was like, no, no, I got to go back to Christianity. <laughs> Oh, that came out, right? That leaked, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, that, that, the fucking, ho- whether it was a tranny or it was a lady, the person leaked it and... Yeah, she wanted to take advantage of the situation. Yeah. Right. Th- there's no saving her from that. It's either she's Wait, but a is, is the very tra- unattractive girl or no, a very attractive... No, Brazilian trannies are dangerous. How, how hot are they, though? How hot are they? Uh, Thai lady boys? Yeah. Just add boobs and a massive ass. Wow. Mm. 
Can I just say I, I, I match with a transgender lady on the Bumble? Oh, maybe not here. I used to <laughs> conversing. Uh, no, it stopped. But this no. is how she looks like. Oh, wow. Pretty cute, right? No, that's a man. Pretty cute. Wait, how do you know? Yeah, that's why so in her, in, her, in her bio, it says, uh, read it, bitches. I'm a non-op transgender woman. It's here. Yeah. Don't tell me you accidentally like me, morphos. And one to two words reply will be unmatched. Super like me if you really read this or was it ac- also accidental? You see, that so it's a lot of uh, that bio That bio is meant for Tinder. Yeah. It's too <laughs> much, it's too much words for Bumble. It's, it's kind of base. <laughs> it's kind of base. So, so and base. that's cheating because right. Bumble is where the female has to start the conversation. Exactly. In her case, she yeah. doesn't have to. Yeah, she because she's still male. Right? <laughs> So, <laughs> the, yeah, the fact that the both of you, you know, have a conversation <laughs> is so fucking special. Yeah, right? because you guys are still waiting for the male, yeah. the female to... Like the female one of you has to, to, to think, I'm so glad you, you got there. Oh my god. Wait, so how did it go? Did you go on the date? Did you oh, sorry. Uh, how did it go? Did you go on the date? No, so, okay, see, so she was the one who started the conversation because oh, she identifies so female. She, she identifies. So, we started talking and then I asked her, um, like, do you want to go out for a drink? And then she says... Uh, where can we go to drink? I say, oh, we can always have, like grab a wine and drink in the park. She's like, can people do that? I'm like, yeah, I've seen a lot of like couples do that in the park. And then uh, she says like, oh, uh, but do you read my profile? Then I say, of course, I always read profiles. Um, and then this is, uh, and then she says like, uh, but if you don't drink in the park, where can we? Where else can we drink? And then I say, oh, you know, we can always get a room somewhere and have drinks. Oh. And, and then and then she says, are you trying to make me drunk and film me? Then I say, I no, I don't do that. But if but, but if you're up for it, I don't mind. And then she's like, no, not my thing. And then of course I say, oh, of course not. I'm just joking. And then she says, anyway, I'm a transgender woman, no surgery, blah blah blah. I say, yep, I know. And here and here's where I fucked up. I said I always wanted to experiment. Ooh. And then she says, oh no, I'm sorry, I'm not an experiment. Watch pose P O S E. I don't know what that is, and learn about trans women. Understand us first. I said sorry, didn't mean to offend. And then she replied, read and do research. You are a future director. I think you should know that. I do not want to be a sexual toy to fulfill a man's desire. Oh. Sorry, man. I deserve better than that. Thanks. And then, wow. I, 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 and then I said, oh, I've never been with a trans woman before and I'm curious. That's all. I didn't mean to say you're an, you're an experiment. And then she didn't reply. Okay. Oh. Yeah. So I, I think I kind of messed up there. I should, I should have used the word explore rather than experiment. Wait, wait, wait. No, but you I, shouldn't uh, say that. You just said like, uh, I'm fine with it. That's it. Wait, yeah. is this entire segment going to be edited out of the <laughs> podcast? That's what I'm curious about. <laughs> no, let's just leave it in. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> yeah, yeah, you, you're right. here for exclusives. No, yeah, no, exclusives I'm, I'm really fascinated happening. by this because, okay, I understand. So, you know, even when it comes to conversations around, you know, disc- discrimination and stuff, there's a, there's a principle of, you know, do your own research, right? Mm. Um, and, you know, also, like, don't expect someone to do the work for you. So this happens especially around... So there's a friend of mine who uh, does a podcast about her life in Belgium. Um, you know, she's black. Um, her friend is, like, uh, Arab. And so, th- you know, they're Belgian, but, of course, you know, they're minorities there. And they constantly talk about how, um, like, when people say something insensitive and all that, yeah, you know, uh, you know they often go, like... Uh, let's say like someone who's a white Belgian person would be like, hey, I didn't know that this is offensive. Why don't you teach me how to understand and you know appreciate the stuff like that and they're like i understand your sentiment but this happens so much so often despite the ton of work that's out there why don't you do your own fucking research mm. you know i think that's where the that principle comes from yeah um so i don't know too much about like how it works uh, in in the uh, lgbt context but yeah maybe something similar yeah i, th- I think it's the the to- the, the choice of words like when I said the word experiment, I think she feels yeah. like she's just like a, a yeah. item for me to like, you know, try and see how, you know, just right. just to fulfill my, my need mm-hmm. of excitement. So I think that might be a little offensive to her. Like I should have used yeah. a different word. You yeah. Know? yeah. She I felt like a Singaporean who was being forced to get vaccinated. <laughs> <laughs> <But> <laughs> <laughs> you have yeah. to sneak it in. <laughs> sneak it in. <laughs> no, but the thing is that, okay, you see at that point also, each individual reacts differently, right? Yeah. That's true. You see, there true. might be someone else who will be like, yeah, oh, uh, like, with me. Experiment oh, with me. yeah, like, I want to be your science experiment. Th- then yeah. what, then what made you actually swipe right on me then? Mm. Yeah. If you have never been with, uh, like a trans woman or what, right. then why did you swipe right? Like, or, or maybe she like wanted, it like, it could have easily gone in another direction. Yeah. But this particular person just chose to give you a, like, 
a sassy reply. Right. Saying that, go and do your research. I'm not here to spoon feed you shit or whatever. Yeah. Or, or maybe she's actually looking for like a boyfriend or a partner yeah. Or, yeah. Or, or whatsoever. And yeah. then she's like, oh, this guy's just a fuckboy. Yeah. He just wants to have fun she's with me. She's looking for but I'm just, serious. But here's the thing. I assume everyone's a degen- degenerate like me. Yes. She's because if, let's say, if, um, I don't know, like a Swedish woman, a Finnish woman come up to me, like, oh, dude, you're Singaporean. You're Chinese. Your father's Indian. Your mother's Chinese. I've never experimented with a Chindian boy before. I'll be like, that. sit on me right now. Yeah. Do whatever you want with my body. <laughs> yeah. I am yours. That's me, right? And I yeah. assume everyone thinks that way. But it's not but, but it's not the case. No, no but, no, no, but actually, you know that's the way you want to live life. Yeah. Well if you, I want to spin if the you wheel. think about it right. Sean, uh, Josie wants to spin but the if wheel. If you think about yeah. it right, if it was in that context, uh, yeah. I don't think anyone would give the same reply as she did. I am not a Chinese boy toy for you to play around with. Do your research about us. We are very hardworking. Right. We only work nine to five. We come back. We expect to cook food for us. You know that kind of nonsense. None of us say that kind of stuff. No, but that also it goes back to we don't uh, have the that back the same background as her. No, because no, men no, but, but don't <laughs> behave like women. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it also goes back to whether like you know Josiah is not a fuck boy, right? Yeah. Like, because if you are an, a non fuck boy. Uh, you'd be looking for a relationship and let's say you have a string of women who wants to jump on your dick simply because it's it's a two-tone dick or some shit like that. Um, oh, dude, that's a very good selling point. I should write that in my bio. Two-tone dick. <laughs> two-tone, two-tone dick. dick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Two-tone, two-tone, two-tone dick. dick. Come at it's me at different <laughs> angles. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Chinese tip and uh, Indian shra. Indian shra. Yeah, I'm big for some, that's small how, for others. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's how to sell myself. <laughs> Damn, Rindo. <laughs> Bring the heat. Uh, oh, I'm one size fits all. You know, you never know. It's like, yeah. He's, he's like, yes, I'm so glad that that's what he took away from the conversation. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Two-tone dick. You maybe you should, you, if Rindo, if this is what you call selective <laughs> hearing. In, in, a re- in a response, put an experiment away. Yeah, experiment away. You yeah. sneak how you like yes <laughs> i'm your science use pro- me abuse me I'm and throw s- me away yeah i'm your science project make a volcano out of me come on just do it yeah, yeah man yeah yeah, yeah. No, more. no sorry sorry cut you yeah, off no, no but that's pretty much it like yeah. so if that happens like 300 times maybe after the 300 first time when a woman comes to you and says hey i'd like to explore explore some of that strange right you'd be like i appreciate the sentiment but you know I kind of looking something different for the change so maybe depends. that's where she is at this yeah. point maybe, depends yeah. what's the number though so if she's a seven and a half and above, I will say yes. You know, my numbers decrease. The more experiments I have. Ah, right. No, okay. he's yeah. not even saying that. He's saying that maybe she has gone through that so many times. Oh. That's, w- that's why she might be reacting in this uh. way. Right. Or maybe could it be the estrogen shots that she's been taking yes. every month? So and she's, then big, she's big. She's starting to think more like a woman. Exactly. And starting to be fucking irrational. Yeah. And... You know, this is this is what happens, huh? Yeah. You want to become a woman, then you and behave then you, like a woman. And then you start talking illogical shit like that. Exactly. Yeah, because any man would be like, yeah, experiment on me. Yeah. So, I mean, blame it on her. But, but do or, you, uh, or, you know, nowadays, like, you know, mental health issues and all yeah. that rampant. Yeah. Don't blame it on her. Blame it on the medication. On the medication. Yeah. Yep. Blame it on the hormone therapy. That's right. That's right. You know, she's never at fault. Right. You see, but we are a gentleman still. We are addressing her as her. Mm. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Her with a D. I, I <laughs> Her with a D. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, oh, she did mention that she hasn't gone through surgery no, and stuff. Not yeah, gone through does surgery. Does she identify as a her? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Trans transgender uh lady. Okay. Transgender woman, okay. yeah. With a so it's a her, yeah. And and looking like that, you have to address her as her. Yeah. Yeah, no, for, for sure. I mean yeah. Yeah. but it depends, right? Because sometimes like I w- my understanding of gender fluidity is just so surface level right don't, now. Don't don't try to Gender know, fluid's it's a little so um it's a little slippery slope la. <laughs> because it means that anyone can identify as any gender yeah. whatsoever. Yeah. You don't have to go and through the whole see, process. Now you could be gender fluid. Correct. So yeah. I, yeah. you at, at, at this, at this at very this point, point, by point the definition of gender fluidity. Feel, right? Like like right now, I feel elevated. I feel high. I feel like a bit whimsical. A bit drunk. So I'm a, I'm a, I'm a girl. Like right now, I'm a girl. I, I feel like a girl. I can just tell you, address me as a she or I'll be offended. On the and third no, week of August, Sean feels like identifying as a girl. Exactly. Yeah. And, he, and you know what? Their response is, fuck you. And I'll be like, uh, it's completely, he identifies. No, I, I support your choice. And there you go. Supportive man. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a girl. Da, 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 da. You know, th- I can feel however I want to feel. That's the kind of society we want. Right today, at this point in time, I'm a female. With a very, trying to be very deep voice. Who's to stop me? Yeah, yeah. Who's to stop me? You can't. I'm not too informed of the topic. Yeah, if he yeah, were to yeah. reach yeah. over and fill up, fondle my breast, 
Yeah. Rape. R- Rindo, Rape, if yeah. let's say hypothetically if you're single, if a girl like that says that she's transgender girl, will you swipe right to her? So this is where it gets weird <laughs> because just like you, yeah. I would also think, okay, this is a new and novel experience. Yeah. And I'd be curious too. And I might actually make the same, uh, you know, use the same responses. Right. You know, I'd probably even say experiment or explore too. So um, I think this experience is just so far away from, you know, um, anything that I've done. So I'd probably use the same thing, make the same mistakes and be rejected yeah. just like Wait, you did. Can I uh, introduce a differentiation within this conversation? Ooh. And the differentiation would be, what would be your ideal outcome okay. of your conversation with that person well my my approach to dates has always been like when i was single and fuck this is like i don't even remember what it's like being single anymore um how lucky i, <laughs> I mean look it's been a while but because uh, uh, yeah. there's there's, there's <laughs> something there's jewelry weighing on his conscience yeah we, uh, we, i will edit this podcast and then remove you saying i'm single <laughs> and then just upload it no, yeah I'm, no, yeah I'm not. I'm single. And then oh. I'll just clip it and say, I will fuck a trunch and the girl. No, but clip I think it. it's like <laughs> the approach that I've always taken about a date is like, I would just say yes to anything, do anything. I'm not very selective. Um, I mean, of course, you know, availability also plays a big part in it, but it's like anything new and novel, I generally be like, let's see what this is about. Right. Uh, one of my favorite examples is that I, uh, this was like maybe 2013, I think. Uh, I matched up with a lady who was like, you know, 45 or something. And yeah. I was like, because I think the the filter that I put was you know eighteen to sixty or something. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, no, you Jesus. just didn't. <laughs> I I think Tinder now is eighteen to ninety. Oh, really? If I'm not wrong. <laughs> wow. Yeah. I'm, I'm missing it's, that boat. It's <laughs> people kill, who kill are dying of COVID right kill now, kill. according to the government. <laughs> you know, ninety so year olds. Like I I matched up with this lady, forty five years old, and you know, so we, we had coffee, and you know, of course, like you know, there was no chemistry. There was no chemistry and stuff. But she she was running a Reiki studio you know, close to my house. Yeah. So I ended up getting a free Reiki class. <laughs> you know, so Wait, hang so on. What's, what's Reiki? It's one of those, you know, it's like one of those breathing technique, you know, yeah. new age, spiritual yoga things. Oh. So, you know, so she was talking Reiki. She was like a Reiki coach and she's like, no, no, no. And, you know, it was obvious that we were not going to, you know, pursue this romantically, but we had a good conversation and, you know, out of, maybe out of courtesy, she said, um, Dude, why no, did you come by? We don't care about conversations. Fuck that. No, 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 no. He's no, no how, how was the sex? Wait, wait. No, wait. So, no, no, no we, so didn't, we didn't do anything. Oh, we didn't do anything. <laughs> yeah. No, oh. no, we, he didn't do anything. <laughs> oh, okay. So, <laughs> so this is his idea of, you know, even like where he right. might pursue things. Okay. Even with that transgender yeah, so person. Like so that, let's yeah. hear your, your reasoning for swiping <laughs> right on, <laughs> the, on that person. Experiments. Um, okay. So here's the thing. I don't think I can bring myself to suck a cock. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just gonna put it out there. All okay. right. In case anyone calls me, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, but but I, I in case anyone calls you an agate, <laughs> agate, suck on my dick. Yeah, lim waving, <laughs> lim waving. No, I said agate. You said agate. <laughs> it could be a maggot <laughs> or nugget <laughs> or nugget. It could be anything. It could be anything. Yeah, the leave the imagination up to our listeners. Yeah. But um, yeah, no, I, I've, I've never, I've never done, yeah, I've never, you know. But sometimes when you're surfing porn and then you see like, you know, some someone suggests like, you know, like trans woman with female, and then you look at the, the thing, and then it's like, oh, she has tits and yes, a massive and dick. Tits and kinda, massive dick. It's yeah. kind of cool. It's kind of hot. Maybe I want to, you know, see where it goes. And, and then automatically you say that she is fucking a chick, mm. and that is hot. Yeah, and then of course I heard stories of people who have. Uh, who have gone been, down. Yeah, gone gone down or yeah. like been with like transgender person and says that the bro jobs are amazing. <laughs> well, because they are, they, they used to be guys, right? So yeah. they know exactly what to do. Uh, wow, okay. So That's true. I thought like, okay, maybe I try and see. And where o- this thing one goes. of the the <laughs> the key information centers is from Hendon Camp, the commando camp in Pasares. Okay. Uh, uh, in Changi. Where it's right next to Changi Village Hawker Center. So that's actually a place where loads of uh, transgendered women, transvestites actually prostitute themselves. Right. As like fucking freelancers, you know, walking around at night. And commanders so there, need have to been, there have been stories about how boys went into national service. Yeah. And then, you know, they go venture out there and they got the best, best blowjobs in their lives. Yeah, but we can't call them transvestites now. Yeah. Let's call it transgender. No, I think yeah. they're still considered as transvesti- uh, transvestites. Wait, oh yeah? Because some of them are just like men dressing <laughs> up. 
<laughs> but isn't that a cross dresser rather yeah, than yeah, yeah but but, but yeah, yeah. they they go far and beyond yeah. in certain that's aspects yeah when there's yeah. no tits and I was like that's a man. so quite a number of boys have reported back saying that they have had their best blow jobs there so yeah, I had nice. blessed book sir why got what what's why why your lips smudge sir <laughs> Were you out no, just you, now? You, no, they didn't go down the person. No, no, so I their lips won't be smudged. No, no, he's saying that the, the, the higher ups <laughs> were giving up. The, oh, <laughs> the, the sir is the one walking around. <laughs> Why do you have find, lipstick on? I need to find my my feminine side. All this commando duty. No, that's actually highly impossible because Changi Air Base is overlooking that entire area. We've got, uh, they, I used to be there, so... They used to be able to zoom in and see all this kind of activity. <laughs> yeah, the major. And, and so, so and like you know, there are fucked up fellas who are like zooming in and seeing, and then they get fucking uh, apprehended for doing that. Right. Major boobage. Wow. But because that that is not part of uh, security. <laughs> yeah, but I don't think I can take anything up my ass. I don't think I can take a dick up my ass though. But if she wants to finger me, I, I think I might say yes. I think she can. She she can find if a prostate, it's a ways, prostate yeah. massage. Yeah, a prostate yeah. massage. I think That's she's. Well, what, yeah, about, yeah. what about the other way around? Can you put your pom pom up it? His pom pom, uh, uh, her pom That's pom why it, there's Maybe another it name. It's called ass pussy. Ah. Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. But <laughs> this is not happening. So uh, it's all uh, speculation. Yeah, she doesn't want to be referred to as an experiment and you don't want to be the scientist. So, no. Yeah. Uh, no, I want to be the scientist. You could have made he it had kinky. a lab coat ready. You could, yeah. have been, you could have made it kinky and said like, I don't think you're an experiment but I want to be your scientist or some nonsense. Yeah. Like, I oh, could just tell her you. I just wasted money buying a gloves <laughs> and Vaseline. <laughs> you're cute and, and a lab coat. Yeah, and a lab coat. <laughs> With a fucking flash, uh, torchlight. Yeah. Fucking so shining into your asshole. Your last thing is like, what about if it's just to compare sizes? You know, like, like what? what like, just, just bring it on to a human. Highly thing. likely that would be way more offensive is than it? what he said. Oh, yeah, was it? Well, but it's like I mean I, I think Sean did make a good point about humor, right? Because yeah. you know I think there is a way to be tacky, but then if the other person finds it funny, yeah, you yeah. know they'd be like. Oh. Yeah. But I think in this instance, I think this person would have yeah, taken no. offense to almost yeah. everything yeah. after, yeah, after sure. what he said. It seems like yeah. it seems it's like it's a, what it was a point of no return. She probably had too well, many other experiences. Would she take offense to me? But if, if my next line would be, "Hey, I want to have your kids," that mm. wouldn't be what? possible. Though. <laughs> She'd yeah, like that would also be impossible. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, like immediately <laughs> match an un- uh, 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 report, block, r- block and unmatch, uh, unmatch a report. Yeah, no, she would have been like, I thought I was looking for a fuck voice. Like, nope. <laughs> yeah, no, he didn't want that to be recorded. <laughs> yeah, so it's like oh, uh, I, I want to get you um, impregnated. I want to impregnate your ass womb. Yeah, fuck, that's your big intestines. The fuck, yeah, no? your, your large intestines. Yeah. yeah, but then how does Bumble work? Like, do you um, establish what you're looking for? You have a profile? Yeah, you have a profile and I think and you have like an age limit and then like a uh, uh, distance yeah, range as well. It, she no, she but I mean even control. for uh, even for the person having the profile, yeah. like do they specify what they what they like, you know? Uh, whether they're, you know, straight I or gay or Yes. So man, woman or unspecified. Right. Or, or, or okay. all of the above or something like that. Okay. And for her it was uh, just men? I'm not sure. Okay. I think so. Okay. I think so. Or or it might be both. I'm I'm, I'm not sure. Yeah, because, but yeah, the I fact that we match shows that she's been swiping on guys, lah. Yeah. Right. Okay. So, yeah, but um, you 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 had a chance and you busted it, man. I busted it, dude. <laughs> I busted it. Yeah, I guess we could go to Bangkok now. <laughs> no, you, you see, showing appreciation and showing what you want to do for that person, yeah, should not be like that. Right. It should be like what the Chinese lady did in court. For Benjamin Glynn. Oh, 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 boo. oh, oh, oh. <laughs> oh, that was good. 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 That was that good. That was 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 good. Dude, that was so smooth. Like, I vastly knocked my dick and slid into her ass pussy. Yeah. I can't do it. Oh, sorry. I think something something happened, I think. Hello, hello. Testing, testing. No, the 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 wires are a bit dodgy. You just got to, yeah. Are we good? Touches a bit, yeah. Yeah, no. Can no, everyone no. hear us? That was yeah. the best. I think yeah. uh, <laughs> if that goes up on, that, if we ever have a compilation like the best <laughs> ever, it's like ways that's gonna be one. Of them. Yeah, I was I was just asking. It's like, oh, how are we gonna? Oh shit! Right, nice one, nice one. Yeah. So this this lady, uh, it was during the case of uh, yeah, this guy yeah, called yeah, Benjamin, guy. Flynn. Benjamin uh, Flynn. 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 Sorry, Glyn. 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 This is uh, the UK guy who refused to wear a mask. Was it on a train? It was on a train, yeah, right? It was on a train, yeah. It was on a train and then uh, someone took a video of it and it went viral. 
and uh, everyone's like an uproar saying that how dare he not wear a mask yeah, and, and the then, same like, length as that other the navy lady la, who didn't want to wear a mask right yeah, MBS but, yeah. MBS but he's yeah. so he's what I think what made this guy famous was that he actually went on a podcast a local podcast is it and then, yeah. Did yeah, he? He did, he did. yeah he did yeah he did and he then did. he was sharing his views on like a sovereign, uh, sovereign uh, he, he claimed to be a sovereign human being and did not like adhere to the to the laws of uh, nation state mm-hmm. and stuff like Are that. Are you serious? Yeah, 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 he did. Some people do that. He, Wait, he, he I, was on local okay, podcast. You, you got to link me up. I, I really want to hear that train wreck. I really, really uh, do. I actually listened to like nine minutes of it and then I was like, okay, enough. <laughs> yeah, it, it wasn't as exciting as this. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> and that podcast has more views than us. We need to up our game oh shit okay now i'm fascinated like so it's one thing to not want to wear a mask because you know sean and i were talking about being petulant but this is this a guy who sincerely believes in the sovereign movement that's what he claims lah that's what he claims okay wow i'm a a sovereign human being i have my rights uh we believe that we are sovereign we do not live in a nation state the nation should not tell us what to do blah 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 they should not force us to do anything you know so like he just goes on and on uh, but I didn't listen to the whole thing. It's like an hour long. I listened to like five, ten minutes, five to ten minutes, and then I was like, yeah. oh, I, I, the guy lost me when he said sovereign. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So yeah. not not a good spokesman for the sovereign yeah. movement. Clearly, but we we yeah. thought that this 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 would be about him. We really thought it would be about him, like all his views and all his shouting, his nonsense in court. But no, someone had to steal the spotlight from him. Which is <laughs> someone had to just go in and swoop it all from him. Which is this lady out of nowhere. <laughs> fangirl who saw him and then wanted to be his queen was like this guy claims to be sovereign I want to be his queen I'm sovereign too so she went to I didn't know you could just actually go to a random court uh, you can I did not know no, no, you can I sh- I, I've just found a new purpose in my life <laughs> <laughs> just go to yeah so technically it is open to the public except yeah. for certain cases uh, uh, like what if I were to go to a, a random court uh, and then just shout pedophile just the guy is just there for shop the thing. Did he not read Peter Fowl is like, no, no, he's here for stealing rubber. <laughs> Peter Fowl was gonna use that rubber to attract kids. <laughs> Fuck Peter Fowl. You know, that's that one. He's like, sir, you're out of order. Okay, I'll go to the next room. I'll just go to the next room and, and, and do it. But yeah, yeah. so but I mean that that is meant so that, you know, let's say family members or stuff, you know, could you know witness what's going on. And uh, was this lady who was the uh, in the uh, audience? Yeah. Uh, was she like um, a relative, no. a friend? Just a random uh, fan. She's a fan. Well, really? we wouldn't say a fan. Yeah. We say um, yeah. I lean on the part that she probably took an interest in this guy because I don't see her place in that court. She just went in and felt that she needed to make her opinions noted. She called the entire court, the whole process, a kangaroo court. Like. She might be the transgender girl that I mentioned, Bubble. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh As she my was gosh. being pulled out, she was like questioning, why? Why? Is your judge offended that I called him a kangaroo? I was like, okay. She actually yeah, said that in court. I think she said something around the part that, that, uh, that your judge. That's the thing. You see, if you call the judge a kangaroo, if you call the judge a kangaroo, that's not just an insult to the, to the judge. But if you call it a kangaroo court, it's two different meanings. Yeah. 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 So she's being charged with contempt of court then? Yeah. Wow. So that that indicated to me, right, that she's just there to declare something else. Right. She just wanted someone, senpai, to notice her. Is she Australian, though? That's the thing. Uh, no. I Maybe she likes well, Kangaroo. Okay, this is what surprises me. I thought, like, she was, you know, the Benjamin Glenn, you know, fan base. No. Not fan base, but, you know, the support the, group. The uh, maybe she was a friend, a yeah. romantic interest, or, you know, whatever, whatever. Well, well, that's up for debate. We do not know her link to him just yet, but... If she was just like randomly showing up at court just to, you know, show her support for Benjamin Glenn and even understanding that, you know, judges and the courts here do not take too kindly to having their integrity questioned. No, no. You know? Yeah. Any court will not take too kindly to have <laughs> yeah, their integrity you know? questioned. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a, this is an image with her with a mask on. So, yeah. Right. Just randomly. Sh- wow. Yeah. But what, so, but, but the, the thing is that Benjamin Glenn has left the country already. Yeah. 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 And she's stuck here. <laughs> so, I mean, she's going to get charged. She's going to take it for the team. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> take one for the team. Take one for the team. <laughs> yeah, she's oh, going to get wow. charged. Yeah. yeah. Okay, this is yeah. new information for me. Uh, I, I, I think this is a very sad moment, right, for, for Singapore to lose such a uh, foreign talent. I mean, no, no, someone. Uh, you know, uh, I, I call him a patriot. Yeah. Oh, a patriot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
because in my point of view, yes, I look at him as an actor for the Singapore government. And how, I, how I quote this girl. It's like she said, yeah. "Why I can't go back inside? Is he the judge afraid I'll call him a kangaroo again?" All right, there you go. <laughs> I don't think the judge is afraid you call him a kangaroo. <laughs> That's two well, different things. Okay, this, this this might be a little bit far-fetched. Okay. Yeah. But the thing is that he has helped him along with the MBS lady. Mm-hmm. They have helped establish a point of view that people who do not wear masks and people who challenge the idea of wearing a mask in Singapore are pretty dumb people. Wow. <laughs> Like these, like these people are either highlighted. Uh, they are either mentally disturbed, or they are just so out there wacky that they just can't adhere to normal rules. You know, as much as I hate conspiracy theories, I really like the appeal of this. You know, because if if I were a government and yes. I am, if I were a government and if I were very conscious of, you know, making sure that you know uh, the people I'm governing want to believe me. I'd probably do something like this. Yeah. You know, I'd be like, hey, it's not it's not my fault. It's look at these guys. It has been yeah. established, right? <laughs> From the sovereign the first <laughs> the pioneer sovereign lady, the yes. lady with the nice rack. Nice rack. Yeah. Right? And let's just say she's Punjabi. She's Punjabi. She's my race. <laughs> <laughs> Half your race. Half my race. <laughs> now you see now you are biracial. Yeah, yeah now I'm yeah, biracial. <laughs> biracial <laughs> slash bi curious. <laughs> <laughs> You're biracial curious. Yeah. So you see, that lady established one form where she started saying the whole sovereign shit and everything. And then you also didn't want, she didn't want to wear the mask, right? So, yeah. number one. And then after that, a long time after that, this guy and the MBS lady, both of them, what, what were their reasonings behind not wearing a mask? One guy saying that he's sovereign again. The other lady saying that knows national secrets. I know national secrets, so you better look after me. Oh in yeah, court. yeah. In fucking court, <laughs> yeah, where people can like, oh, she does. Let's get rid of her. <laughs> like, not very smart. And, and, like and her audacity, father, you know? and and I don't know why they interviewed her yeah. father, and th- and the father said that oh, she was she was perfectly fine till she went to China. Yeah. Uh, Classic uh, blame deflection it, tactic. Blame it, right? <laughs> blame it on the bad people. <laughs> <laughs> and she was not doing diddly squat in China. She was there to run a company. <laughs> right. So she went there and apparently she got influenced by the Chinese yeah, they come back uh, uh, bureaucracy maybe. or whatever. Fuck the higher ups. No, but I think the reporter was just trying to humanize, you know, her. And yeah. Which doesn't make sense. And but, but the dad did say that she's a good person. Yeah. 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 Uh, we need to ask the very important question though. Uh, in which state did she have the bad soup? Was it in Wuhan? Because th- the you no no we, I, I we, we don't think I don't think she was anywhere close to Wuhan. May- but maybe the bad soup that she had was uh, imported from Wuhan because we know w- the bats in Wuhan are being uh, programmed to uh, fucking uh, influence like uh, human. Uh, oh, internet. but you know you know it's a funky thing, you know. What? There were no bats at the Wuhan market. Oh, okay. <laughs> Has it been established that it's from bats though? Uh, the whole idea was that it was compared to viruses from bats. Okay. Why, why did we find out? Why did we find out that there are no bats native to Wuhan? Yeah, but bats can fly, right? <laughs> I mean, yeah, they don't to be native to a specific space. Like there's like no bats whatsoever, no caves. There are bats in Singapore as well. Yeah. I think we should set up a bat. There are bats in Bukit Timah. Yeah. Hey, dude. Since you control the uh, the jurisdiction of uh, Geelang, no Geelang is not bats; it's chickens. Yeah, or frogs. But I think we should open yeah. a bat uh, bat soup store. Like I wouldn't be in surprised Geelang. if there'd be bats in there because there's like a lot of like really giant trees and you know. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I'm, sure have, I think I'm sure we can have. I'm sure we can have like a bat farm yeah. there. Yeah, yeah. You know? like the cut cats. <laughs> I think a lot of uh, I think it's going to sell well though. Barbecue bats. Yeah. Bat soup. Bat soup. Yeah. Bat. Uh, um. What the the Japanese? And then you you call uh Sito Yupin to Sito Sito. The Makan Sutra Sito to come and endorse. Oh, same recipe as Wuhan. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, we should do that. We should do that. Yeah, give us like four stars. Same recipe. Uh, Dai Lai must try. Dai Lai must try. Yeah, yeah. Dai Lai must try. You uh, when you try, you might die. Yeah. So, so uh, you take vaccinary, you can get two bolts. Oh yes. Ours is different. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, we got to, we got to entice the population to to take the vaccine. Jab jab. Yeah, jab jab. You get <laughs> one free bowl. Ah, uh, no. Only fully vaccinated. Only fully vaccinated people can eat. Right. And have a 90 no, no, no. at least a ninety six percent. No, but then you you know we have to we have to hit the masses. So we don't care whether you're vaccinated. 
But if you're vac- if you're fully vaccinated, you get a free a- ball. A- actually, if you want to hit the masses, you shouldn't go for vaccinated, unvaccinated. You yeah. should go for halal certificate. <laughs> right. Right, right. Right? Yeah. So you hit all the different demographics. Correct. Because a- in Singapore, there are Indians who also don't eat food which are not halal certified. Right. Is it? Good we point. Good really point. Yeah. Yeah. So we need to be sponsored by Muis. Yes. Yeah. Let's no, but that one, okay, let's go to already. <laughs> <laughs> True. True. Uh, or you could take the shortcut, which is like what? Uh, no pork. No pork. No lard. Right. No pork. No yeah. lard. Technically not. Also, no flavor. <laughs> no pork. No lard. No flavor. <laughs> Just soup. Yeah. Uh, wh- what are we gonna go on about? Are we gonna go on about the s- no, sovereign guys? I, I, was, I was kind of curious, like, cause um, um, I, I thought we were gonna talk about like Afghanistan. We are, we are. <laughs> we were, we were trying to find. Yeah, we're not find, not done with Benjamin. Oh yeah, yeah, no worries. The guy is uh, claiming to be. No, I think the guy just used it as an excuse. I don't think he actually believes in the sovereign run. I think it just works for him. In that case. Well, see, yeah. this is this is my this is my issue with this, right? Mm-hmm. Like everybody's talking about the sovereign movement, and I didn't realize his extra background. So, mm-hmm. but at least prior to this, I was like, this is a guy who just wants to do what he wants, yeah, and yeah. will retroactively apply reasoning to justify that stance. Yeah. I do not, for a moment, think that his decision to not wear a mask was a rational one, built on some concept of sovereign movement. He was just like, I don't like I wearing a mask, wear. yeah, and when people challenge me. I'm gonna throw any rationale, you know, to justify that. Yeah, you know, but see, that Rindo, right, there's there's no there's no way that he could get away with saying that he was sovereign because there's precedence for that. Well the the heavily titted Punjabi lady mm. Yeah, but claimed that she was sovereign and that didn't bring her anywhere. But oh. we, we're also making the assumption that this person is well informed with what happens in Singapore, right? Yeah. Like, like the reality is that most people don't read the news, most people are not particularly aware of anything outside of their sphere of concern and someone who sheep. seems as... Sheep, you mean. Sorry? Just call them for what it, what they are, sheep. Yeah, well, it, it's not just about being sheep, right? It's just not being... It's, being about, it's, it's just about self-interest, right? If you are, uh, you know... Um, if you, if if news doesn't affect you affect you you don't care about what's going on right and this is uh, very prevalent especially among uh, in expat uh, communities so that's what i kind of got from it you know so he's a person who's not particularly informed about what's going on uh very much interested in the immediate circle of friends and you know networks that he's part of and you know he's more inclined to read news from his home country than the sensibilities over here mm-hmm. so Despite living in a country where, you know, mask wearing and all these things are taken seriously, he's taking the approach of, oh, no, I don't need to wear a mask because some random site that I get my news from is what I consider right. But wasn't wasn't the situation way graver in his home country? Yeah, but like... Where you couldn't travel out of your house? But it goes... Where, it where go- you had uh, yeah. restrictions, like, by the mile? Maybe he yeah. likes to be restrained. Like uh, th- th- that's where I came up with th- with the thought of of him, the MBS lady. Like it, it just seemed like because the MBS lady, right? That that's a whole other kettle of fish. Because this lady was part of the navy. She mm. used to command people in the navy. So she, you know, like if everything that they are saying about her is true, this lady had like fucking classified information at her disposal, and. To think that such a person is just going to let everything go, just like that, the rules. like like it doesn't seem like this lady should know how Singapore works and everything, how the military works and all. So for this lady to just come out there and say that, yeah, yeah, like you can't prosecute me because I'm I'm gonna well, well divulge like information, <laughs> classified information. No, about that's actually a really great point. But I do f- uh, that's a really great point. But I do feel like it. Yeah, it applies differently for different people. And the common thread between uh, that the dude and the lady is that they want to get away scot-free. And they will use any rule in the book to get at this, right? And it's not like it's a, it's a rare thing for people to do, right? Like if I were caught doing something, you bet your ass that, you know, I will try every single thing in the book to get out of it, mm. right? W- within the realm of, you know, law and defending myself for sure. So... Uh, my theory or my belief is that that lady literally had no secrets, you know, worth divulging. But she was like, "Let's see how much I can, you know, get the judge or 
you know, the, yeah. the legal system to pause for Get a while. Shake. You know, like, can I live to see another day? You know, so I just feel like if she can just, you know, be the strongest person in the room at that point in time, she can figure out what happens later on. You know, and it's unreasonable behavior, but it's understandable behavior because it's like you have it in your head that you are in the right and therefore any rationale that you come, come up with is justified. That's, that's, I mean, that's where I was coming from. And it's also behavior that the state loves. Um, Be- because it has just established that people who are not going to wear the mask and who are going to be challenging it have no reason behind them not wearing the mask. Right. Okay. So sometimes the, the, they the need the story to bolster are, it. The, yeah, the reasons don't make sense according to these two people. Yeah. So it 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 is establishing, right? Like now if anyone anyone were to like not wear the mask immediately if yeah, you, you get apprehended and you're going to be charged in court general public the p- like the 90% of people they're going to be like yeah what kind of moron what, what, yeah, what fucking yeah. moron what sovereign what bullshit yeah well i you know you're you're actually right in that i think the validity of the sovereign movement i mean i mean these two instances kind of cheapened the whole sovereign movement yeah. right so i think anyone who sincerely believes in the sovereign movement right now is like okay let's not talk about this to friends but anymore. where would it work? You know? <laughs> so like it'll work in Taliban, in <laughs> Taliban Afghanistan. That's where it'll work. King of segways today, bro. Well, oh fucking yeah, done. <laughs> My cock wants to segue as well. <laughs> Rindo, do you have an Instagram account? Uh, I do. I'm not on. So- oh yeah, I, I am. I do have an account. Yes. Where? Oh, it's uh, but well done. Oh, it's um, it's a uh, Char well Samosa. Yeah. Yeah, that that was going to be our main our, our main topic, but he brought <laughs> it on really well. The Taliban, <laughs> the effects that they've had. The are we? I'm at, I'm on the screen. Holy shit! Yeah, yeah. How the shit hit the fan so quickly? No one. I don't know if any. I think probably there are a lot of people that predicted it happen to well, happen. It it has been happening for quite twenty some years. Time. Yeah, so twenty years was when, and this is like so. Uh, all right, m- maybe if we could uh, provide some quick context, yeah. uh, it's like uh, so the Taliban captured a number of regions in Afghanistan uh, a couple of weeks before the U.S. took the withdrawal of troops seriously. Yeah. Um, I think three days ago was when uh, they they captured Fully Kabul, yeah, uh, with little to no resistance from the incumbent government, and uh, you know the Taliban has created a deal with the incumbent government you know, asking for a peaceful transition of power. <laughs> well, which which the incumbent agreed to. Um, and well, the incumbent in lieu of the current president uh, who fled. Yeah, so who fled. So it kind of became a case of, you know, the Taliban negotiating with a headless just, uh, uh, government. Just whoever le- was yeah. left behind. Yeah, so and they were who like basically probably ordered all the Afghani uh, military to stand down and, you know. Yeah, so... Okay, so the U.S. has completely left Afghanistan. Um, or do they still they control the air- airfields? Uh, they still control the airfields, but they're in the process of withdrawing. So they've given themselves a tentative symbolic date of leaving by the 11th of September in 2021. Wait, yeah. hang on. 11th yeah, yeah. of September. Yeah, so... The date could not be even, no, you know... But it was a conscious choice. It was a conscious choice. Yeah, they did it on purpose. 9 like 11. Okay. They, they wanted to, you know, make it a big deal that they are leaving Afghanistan after 20 years. Right, you but know, it's so it's isn't it funny that none of the hijackers were Afghanis, nah. and then they choose to leave for nine. Oh uh, right, September they were uh, they were Saudi. Yeah, right, yeah. yeah. Seventeen yeah. of the nineteen hijackers, right? Yeah. Were, were Saudis. Were Saudis. Yeah. Yeah. So the other two were Iranians. So this whole, wrong. the whole thing, th- this the the one the most uh, again I simplify uh, the most the ongoing narrative is that the American created this enemy. Uh, they created this enemy. Yeah, and then I mean they got into a discussion with the enemy for twenty years. I, I, I wouldn't say it's that the Americans created the enemy. Oh, it, it was, was a, a joint effort. Yeah, collective effort to create the effort. enemy against the uh, because at one point the Soviets were. If you go back to the eighties, yeah, yeah, the yeah, Soviets no, go were. Go back, go back to the the. Okay, I'll just uh, take a quick break. Sorry. Yeah, 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 yeah. You go back to before prior to World War Two, mm. right? So the British were actually in charge, right. in Afghanistan. Yeah. And after World War Two, when they were coming out of South Asia, India, Pakistan, and all, yeah, they left as well. And then there was a power vacuum, right? So there, and then there were dictators who were installed. 
Right. And at that point, Afghanistan was split between ancient fucking ideas. Yeah. Fucking rural communities, the Pashtun people who have been Islamized, mm. become Muslims and all. And then you've got dictators who are trying to run the country and westernize it. Because the Western money is prop is propping them up, right? Mm. And if you were to look at documentaries in the seventies where British people were actually in there documenting how Afghanistan used to look, Kabul and oh, yeah. Kandahar and yeah. all. Even Iran. Yeah. B- before the yeah. Uh, revolt. Yeah. Re- the before revolution. Before the revolution. Yeah. Completely yeah. different. Yeah. When the Shah of Iran was in there. Yeah. It was completely different. So it was westernized parts of the city. Yep. And really rural places where people had no idea what it was like in the capital city. Yeah. The <laughs> capital city had cinemas, it mm. had universities. With very strong arts culture as very well. Very strong arts culture, yeah. trade and everything. It was totally a different world. Yeah. And you just lived kilometers apart. Yeah. Like 20, 30 kilometers apart, 100 kilometers apart. Like things used to change. And slowly the Soviets came in. Yeah. The Soviets came in. They were eventually shunned off by the Mujahideen and the CIA pumping in money and all. Mm. And they left late 80s, early 90s. And the power vacuum was being fought over with. Fought over for. And that is when the Taliban came into prominence. The Taliban fought. Uh, yeah. Wait, was the, was the Taliban part of the Mujahideen? Yes. Part, it's like an offshoot of the Mujahideen, right? Yeah. Right. But you've got to keep in mind that the Taliban are mostly made of native people, the right. Pashtun people, but right. who are radicalized by the CIA, by the Mossad, by MI6, who have been funded by all these organizations. They have worked together closely with Al Qaeda or what the CIA and you know the Western uh, intelligence agencies deem as Al Qaeda now or ISIS, or whatever, they were so close with them and they were working with Pakistani intelligence as well. Right? Well, so I think there's probably one thing that uh, I'd put in. Um, there is, of course, no argument in that, uh, you know, Pakistan has harbored this kind of activity. Yeah. But a lot of it, some of it may be deliberate, but a lot of it is simply because it's very hard for the Pakistani government to govern especially the northern regions of uh, Pakistan. Cause yeah. so, so we're talking about you know, the corridor between Afghanistan and India. These are like mountainous the, the regions. It starts with B, right? Bal- Bal- uh, ba- Baluchistan, uh, I Baluchistan think so. or something like that. Yeah. So you know, it's a very hard place to govern, and this is how um, a lot of these you know, tensions happen. So yes, Pakistan may be complicit in some of this, but a lot of it also points to an inability to do this because yeah. it's an inhospitable region. And, you know, the folks who live there are in a better position to, you know, command the space than, you know, some people from, you know, Islamabad or, you know, Karachi or Lahore. So, and it's hard. So, I know that Pakistan gets a lot of flack and especially as an Indian person, I'm predisposed to think that, you know, Pakistan No, but I, w- I wouldn't say it's, it, it's nothing to do with the Pakistani people. Yeah, no, the, the government, I mean, yeah. It's not even the government. It's the intelligence agencies. Right. ISI, so, the ISI, yeah. ISI yeah. they have their own agenda like the CIA. They they have their own agenda. They need their own funding. They do what fits their purpose. So, even when Musharraf, uh, Pervez Musharraf, who was a former president of uh, Pakistan, but he became the president via a coup, right? Like he had no n- nothing much to say when it came to when it came to intelligence, right? Because the ISA like uh, ISI like CIA were doing their own shit. Right. Yeah, but it's also because, like, uh, the unfortunate mm-hmm. reality is that mm-hmm. in Pakistan, um, like, the military has huge influence and power, and oftentimes mm. the government, the civil government bodies really struggle with this, you know? So, um, you know, and it's tough. It's like, I think a good analogy would, would be like what happens in, in Thailand, you know, where the military junta has a, yeah. has a strong influence, you know? Uh, or, like, even in uh, Myanmar. So there's something similar going in Pakistan. So even if you have a civil government body that you know wants to do good, w- that wants to make change, um, the army doesn't allow it. Mm. You know, simply because yeah. they're so entrenched, they're so you know, uh, they, they have power over everything and they refuse to give it away with their own ethos. 
at you state, know, yeah. it's, and it's it's a bit, uh, yeah, I know. And it's just <laughs> these things are hard to change. Yeah. So there are tons of Pakistani activists out there who want to make a difference and stuff, but you know, it's like a David versus Goliath situation. You know, when uh, being pitted against the Pakistani army. So within the context of that, even the Pakistani army is struggling with, uh, you know, the rise of the Taliban in Afghanistan and how the Taliban is also. Um, you know, moving across these spaces, right? Including uh, Pakistan and India and stuff like yeah. that. So for me, it's super interesting because yes, there are conversations happening about, you know, the rise of Taliban, uh, you know, the violence, the, uh, you know, the uh, the repression of women's rights uh, that's, you know, that everybody's afraid for right now. But within the geopolitical space in the region, um, in India, there's like some other conversations also happening. So. Yeah, it's it's all out like really, you know, in a very morbid morbid way, fascinating. So yeah, yeah. Uh, it's quite interesting that you brought up the whole women's rights suppression and all. Uh, WikiLeaks just released documents, uh, which actually show that the CIA was penning documents to propagate uh, women's suppression to countries like Germany, France to gather support from female activists mm. so that uh, the occupation of Af Afghanistan would be fought, fought for by women in different European countries. Uh, oh. in what do you mean? We okay, so... They, they, uh, they said they want so to fight now for win women's freedom and then they yes, them to support so, so now what is happening is that women, uh, women's rights children's rights whatever religious minorities and all now people are now people are fighting for that now people are fighting for that right like they're saying that oh now the taliban is back women are going to be oppressed children are going to be oppressed uh, small girls can't go to school if you're gay you're going to be thrown off the roof or something. The roof yeah. or you know you're going to be ill treated if on you if you're an atheist off the roof. You're, off you're going to be persecuted and all so this kind of like uh, propaganda is being hyped up and the CIA actually wrote documents of like instructions on how to prop up all these kind of propaganda and to get people riled up in European countries right to get consensus so that NATO forces will return back to Afghanistan. But there are oh. cases of, of, of like women and like uh, homosexuals or, or in, in different uh, people of diverse groups being oppressed and uh, no, I, in, I, in, in I Afghanistan. I, I know I read a little bit that well the Americans you know that they, they went supporting the rise of the Taliban against the Soviet they actually made in order to get the Taliban support they let them uh, carry out or carry out the, their version of the I don't know what it quor not the Quran the, their rules Sharia Sharia rules yeah. which is those kind of shakes so they kind of uh, in either by inaction or, or just not acknowledging it encouraged it yeah and then how they're doing the whole you see what they're doing they're oppressing women support me and we can invade them so the whole the whole idea of the, the backlash right now is how the West or at yeah. least just the US uh, has made use of the situation in Afghanistan to suit their benefit regardless of you know all that all that shield little subjects or the the terror attacks here and everything is just to further their own use mm. and they've been using them yeah this it, whole time it has been 20 years of opium and lithium yes and now well, when it no yeah. longer suits their purpose they pull out and the current things we see right now, the Afghan the Afghan people running, climbing aboard planes and all that, is the picture perfect view of what's happening. They pulled out without any fucking care. They yeah, don't yeah, care. Yeah, yeah they, like they the don't actually the care. Yeah, like the scenes from the airport of people running after the planes trying to get into the plane. Yeah. I uh, the, the first time when I watched it, I thought Afghani uh, Afghanistan has just released a, a regulation that uh, you can travel out of the country. <laughs> that, 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 oh. that they just legalized yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, the, the vaccine passport and yeah. everyone's like, I want to get the fuck out of here. And I'm yeah. so... And if you remove the turbans, <laughs> it could have been Singapore. And I, I, and I'm, I understand the sensitivity of it. It could have been Changi Airport. It yeah. could have been Changi Airport. Yeah, maybe that's the uh, Tiger Air. Is Tiger Air yeah. still around? 
I understand yeah. the sensitivity of it. People will be like, I want to get on Tiger Air right now. I don't care <laughs> if the seats are like uncomfortable. I don't care if the, the planes are small and shit. I just want to leave the country. I'll fly on the wing. If I can. I yeah, I just want to leave the country. <laughs> no, but flying in uh, Tiger in Tiger Air feels like you're flying on the wing. Yeah. <laughs> because the plane is shit. Yeah. This one, they actually flew on the wing. Yeah. Yeah, they tried to. I like flew Tiger once, thing, yeah. never again. Fuck you have yeah, zero I leg room. I had to check in my, my limbs in the fucking <laughs> OA yeah. carrier. I feel like a guy hanging off the wheel of the plane. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Rinda oh. wanted to say something. You want to ask... Ask a question. No, eh? no. So I had a question about um, uh, I had a question about um, uh, lithium because okay, I understood the whole you know opium thing, but uh, is is lithium uh, uh, you know a mineral that's being you uh, that's you know uh, it's th- th- rare or hard to get. Uh, no, I mean like is Afghan sure. if Afghanistan a source of lithium? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So they found a vein of lithium which in like uh, mid two thousands was worth like a trillion dollars. Ooh. Yeah. And you can see that there's always an underli- underlining reason for freedom fighting. For yeah, and, and d- we Democrat are talking about a time where lithium was being used for like lithium batteries, mm-hmm. lithium ion batteries and all. And then now look at where lithium is being used for all electric cars. Yeah. And like it's so no its use has been really, really, really no helpful. No From like cell phones to laptops now to electric cars. No, yeah. no one yeah. wants to throw around that that the accusation, you know, just throw it around, like because they've been hit with the accusation of you know, oil and all that kind of thing. But every single time there's a freedom cause or a cause for for liberation, right? It's never usually that reason. There's always an underlying thing and underlying something we can get back. You know, of course, you know, people say like, oh, oh I would be crazy to go over there and fight. But th- that was what you were selling it on. I'm going there to fight for the liberation of the people. And look at what what, what happened. Actually, they weren't even going for the liberation of people. Uh, they they, they were, went they were after Osama bin Laden. Yeah, yeah. Osama yeah. bin Laden. So and you have cases of like the uh, Marines actually guarding like opium fields. Yeah. Opium fields, no, yeah. And then they they're like, why why are we here? Yeah, they why g- are we guarding? They, I think and then the reason is like, oh, so the, uh, uh, the, the Taliban, Taliban won't like overtake the opium fields yeah. and then turn it into heroin. And then after that, you see CIA operatives coming and say, yeah, let's harvest all this and sell it to the big pharma. Because so in, uh, yeah. in 20 years' time, you're going to have this virus and you're going to need these opiates to give to the mass public. You know, uh, no, ideally, I, I think there's larger like geopolitical concerns that probably define the conflict. But about the opium thing and about the general corruption on the ground, there are rumors that um, you know the, the American occupation had a lot of folks who were profiting off the system. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah. so... But uh, no one talks about it, though. Military. Yeah, uh, look, and once again, I have nothing to back no, it I mean, up. But, but no, no, military yeah. indus- industrial complex, that you don't have to back it up. The it's records are all uh, available. The Americans okay. themselves know it. No, I think they said they, oh, no. they, they said so one trillion GE one trillion dollars Halliburton you've got the Carla and, and group you've got BlackRock you've yeah. got so many and then you look at uh, who who was the former CEO of Halliburton yeah Dick Cheney Dick Cheney who was the one who signed the agreement to go into Afghanistan and Iraq Dick Cheney wow and then and then, and then, okay. and then, and then you draw the dots and it's like what the fuck's happening yeah and then right now who the was the one who asked to stand down NORAD when the Twin when Towers fell? Dick yeah. Cheney. Dick Cheney. When yeah. Joe yeah. Biden went up there and gave that speech of the how the Afghani military didn't have the will to fight, it sounds scripted. It just sounds like we're going to pull out and that's who we're going to blame. No, and, and whatever that the US government was saying as a, uh, as a cover story, saying that we paid trillions of dollars. Yeah. No. You made that money. You made again. that amount of money by selling right. off all the raw material that you took out from Afghanistan but no one wants to see that like and they weren't actually paying the Afghani forces oh, so they're Afghani underfed. journalists came on uh, Flagrant 2 the podcast with uh, Andrew yeah. Schultz and Akash Singh and he was saying that these soldiers are not being paid yeah. that's underfed. why d- yeah and they're underfed they're like underarmed US and you know what's the worst thing that after the US forces left the Taliban are going to target all these people who, who actually sided with the Americans translate yeah. translators and the military uh, well, operators the military, who sided with they, the Americans they, they were told to stand down so, they yeah. the so these people the are the ones wanting to flee, uh, flee the country because yeah, their lives the and their families are at stake yeah, the innocent you know? Afghan people left behind who yeah. had you know, but, but there's also another thing during during the occupation of 20 over years, right? There, there was this documentary, this film made by this guy called Jeremy Scahill. So it's called Dirty Wars. And he went to Afghanistan, he went to Yemen and all, and he was actually trying to find out what what is the consensus on the ground? What do the what do the ordinary uh, citizen of 
uh, Afghanistan, of Iraq, of uh, Yemen, what do they feel about all this intervention by US, UK, mm. Australia, France, all these countries which are sending in troops? And they, he actually found out that these people were actually being attacked. Like a f- uh, family would be having a family gathering, they would get raided, and people will be shot, killed, and then after that, the commander will come in and apologize. And then they will have the chief of JSOC, which is a Joint Special Operations Command. That man will come in, who's like a full colonel or uh, one-star general, uh, brigadier general, come in with a goat and and say that, oh, we are so sorry, we will give you all the support we can and everything. The one goat. And they will be like, that was an accident. But then when you interview the elders of the village, the family... These people are now saying that why are w- why am I not joining the opposition forces? And then you hear them say that I am going to join because the Americans killed my my father, the Americans killed my brother, the Americans killed my grandfather, and we did nothing. Yeah, we were supporting you guys. We were doing nothing. We were staying at home. I so so it's you know it's hard to argue with that where you like you guys are just like like America is just running operations or training yeah. whatever and then you guys just act as, as if you've got impunity over everything and then you look at the people that the CIA and the intelligence agencies are being uh, apprehended to send to places like Guantanamo Bay or even there's this uh, highly uh, this CIA Abu Ghraib uh, not Abu Ghraib uh, this black uh, black salt uh, Tim Dillon should talk about oh, it uh, black, black salt um, black water no, 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 no. Uh, black salt, uh, black salt field. Is this like brick house industrial complex in Afghanistan, which is a CIA uh, black op site, and apparently that site has been used for interrogation of supposed terrorists, but zero intelligence has been gathered from there. And most of the people, or I should say, hundred percent of the people who went there, are actually innocent. And they're just bringing people in because they want to, you know, hit the numbers to interrogate them to show like the the defense. Uh, uh, Department of Defense that, that, that the budget is uh, well accounted for and most of the, in- the the intelligence to capture all these people comes from like contractors yeah private contractors yeah private, private contractors groups, yeah. who the US government is paying them to be there or the CIA is paying them to uh, be the there yeah CIA is paying them so to be there so it's like uh, you get a whole network of people who are mm. being paid to do money and then to find dirt but they cannot find any dirt so they just yeah just grab, grab a taxi driver or oh, he has a cell phone yeah he might be a terrorist let's get him in oh, he's transporting a vacuum cleaner yeah that's an IED it might yeah. be an IED yeah let's just bring him in crash so him put him in a box and, and then uh, have like snakes and, and rats in there and then let's see what information you get from him yeah. So it becomes a How do you have a Dyson vacuum cleaner? Yeah. Oh, that white man. Oh, that means you're uh, Dyson. Come, 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 come. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, yeah I, I mean, I think show. I think the whole thing speaks for itself. They claim that they've been training the Afghani uh, military to fight. They've given them the whole thing. They've 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 sup- uh, they've what paid for the air force and everything. They they all all this sounds like a disgruntled manager. Say I paid for everything. How come they they fucked up? Twenty years, and this is what you have to show for it. 20 yeah. years of your so-called Wait, training. You know, the amount of shit that Western countries have been doing there, like, um, I think it was like a year or a year and a half ago, uh, Australian media outlets started putting specials out on the Australian Special Forces in Afghanistan. Oh, 60 seconds, yeah. Yeah. Uh, 60, 60 minutes. 60 minutes, 60 minutes and four corners. Seconds. <laughs> it's not TikTok. <laughs> no, that's how long it takes to come. <laughs> <laughs> you give me an eight inch uh, or come in 60 seconds. <laughs> 60 seconds. <laughs> yeah, so these special ops for uh, soldiers were literally gunning down young boys in in like paddy fields, yeah. in wheat fields, setting their fucking Belgian Malinois to go and chase and bite. Yeah. And just like shooting them. Yeah. There, there is a video on uh, 60 Minutes Australia where they show the most decorated special ops uh, personnel. I can't remember his name. Uh, but he's been decorated by uh, the Australian uh, SES. And there's this video of him and his crew. Uh, they landed on this uh, field paddy. And then they're like, is that guy... Do you think the guy is a hostile? Yeah, yeah, maybe. Let's go chase him. So they, gun, they, they went up to him, pointed a gun at him. And then the guy turned around and looked at his commander. and said, like, should I... What, what, what did he say exactly? Um, should I drop him? I think he yeah. said, should I drop, drop him? him yeah. Then the guy's like, yeah, fuck it, do it. And just fired two shots at him. And then they just walk, walk on their way. Shit. And before that, uh, before that, they actually let the dog go. So the dog was like biting the guy, 
and then the guy was like screaming then he was as the guy is screaming in pain it's like uh, what, uh, are you Taliban so asking him questions the guy obviously didn't answer because he's in pain mm. and then he turned to his commander and I tried to drop him so yeah drop him and then there are reports coming in from uh, technicians engineers in the special ops itself or in the in the Australian army where like anonymous reports of people saying that all these guys are actually dropping like radio sets on people that they kill so that they can justify oh, planting saying, evidence and shit so yeah planting yeah. evidence yeah. saying that these people have radio sets and then they are suspected terrorists to justify their their, their kills oh yeah. and, the, and the like the excuses that they came up with after all of this came out right, it was like oh these guys are trained to be the best of the best they are meant to be doing shit that was not this it was meant to be higher level but the Australian government only clears them to do all this kind of shit hey this is not the innocent person's fault, right? Mm, yeah. Right? Yeah. Like, how can it be... Yeah, they that, like, how can that be ever said as a reason? Like, what the fuck? Then then you look at uh, who are the main operators in Afghanistan and Iraq and most of them who are doing all this shit are actually contracted to uh, uh, private companies like uh, Blackwater, for example. Yeah. One of the biggest uh, private... Uh, mercenaries. Yeah. Mercenaries in America. Mo- most of them are former Green Berets or, or no, Navy SEALs, Navy Seals yeah. part of the Black right. Ops, and then after they retire, they go into Blackwater. There's this a uh, very famous case of uh, uh, this Blackwater operation in 2010, I think, in this square in Iraq where they yeah. had a friendly fire, and then they fired upon uh, Iraqi civilians and uh, Iraqi uh, military personnel. So it was like a miscommunication, and then they were firing, and then like I think one of the officers shouted, like, stand down, stand down. But the guy was just opening fire on like random civilians. So the, uh, and and this was all called co- um, this went out all the way I think all the way up to Congress. Yeah. And then the the there DOJ the, or DOD came in and then they just quashed it and then no one talked the about it after. Yeah. yeah. It was a car that drove towards refused to stop. The Iraqi uh, uh, yeah. police was trying to stop him, didn't stop, he just drove. And then he just opened fire on the car. So and Blackwater the yeah. saw the car, they told him to stop. The bl- okay, the Blackwater actually carried out protocol. It was just this one Iraqi, I think it was Iraqi, uh, either incompetence on the police side, or it was just this one driver who just refused to stop. So they shot him, his mother was at the back, and I think as they were shooting him, the Iraqi police officer thought, like, the fu- you know, it was a, they're shooting at me, I shoot back. So as they shot back, more, sh- so they more threw shots fired, yeah. and everything. Uh. Yeah. So it was a quite major fuck up. But in actuality, I think people saw that the black water operatives were carrying out what they needed to do. Like what they were trained or told to do was to protect the... The, the installation. The ins- uh, the, I think there was a, a convoy. I don't know what they were protecting. Uh. So it was just this one civilian that refused to fall in line. Uh, and it just looked like it could be an IED uh. And they yeah, didn't but know the but you see, the that's usually the narrative that comes out. Yeah. So that's so what happened with Pat Tillman as well. Yeah. You guys heard about Pat Tillman. So mm. Pat Tillman was this Amer- NFL football player on a multi-million dollar contract. Uh, 9-11 happened, uh, Afghan happened, and when Iraq was going to happen, him and his brother decided to stop their career and be patriotic and go enlist okay. into the army. But they were like, Let's we are like top notch athletes, so let's end this into special forces or like sp- like higher level. So they enlisted into the Rangers. So the Rangers immediately deployed them overseas, right? So after their training and everything, and he died of friendly fire. Okay, so he died from friendly fire. U.S. Army spun the thing, saying that he died from uh, insurgents fire. Okay, so they had a full-blown military funeral, medal of honor, whatever top military uh, decoration you can give to the guy. Big news. His family, his brother, his mom and all, they were like, fuck this. It doesn't seem right. We are being lied to. So they were super unhappy with the entire thing. So full military funeral, everything, right? Mm. They were not happy at all. They were like trying to dig for truth calling up the superiors asking for more information eventually people within the organization organizations are whistle blue and said it was friendly fire that killed him <laughs> so Shit what they were trying nah. to do the u.s government or or the dod or what doj uh, dod they were trying to recruit on the back of his death so they're like no no uh, tragedy should not be no good left mis- uh, used fire, but 
if we if we yeah. if we spun it if we spun it we we can recruit more people to go to Iraq or Afghanistan so yeah there's no such thing as bad press yeah yeah uh, you can uh, always spin it to become yeah, good PR so so the whole Afghanistan Iraq and all it has been very bad but the key thing to keep in mind is that the British could not hack it there the Soviets could not hack it there Americans could not hack it there maybe the Chinese can and uh, a really interesting uh, thing uh, an article just came out on Chinese Asia today saying that the Taliban have just come across trillions of dollars of mineral reserves going back to lithium and all <laughs> so now the Taliban have access to it right but who is the Taliban going to sublet it to China China yeah so uh, for 20 odd years US and their allies have been re- uh, digging up all these resources this is interesting so, because so now yeah. it's just China's turn we will leave it's your turn we give you yeah you did as well you started this whole COVID thing thank you well here's the uh, here's a question though like you know uh, Afghanistan and China do share borders right do yeah. they do right mm. very uh, close actually yeah but do they uh, have their small been border but have there been any hey actually they conflicts? yeah very very small small so but close very no close so I mean, the reality is that, like, uh, especially in that region, uh, borders are porous simply because of the nature of the geography, yeah, right? Do they not? I don't think so. I, I think, I think India and China. China. So it's like uh, Pakistan, uh, India. India is like a very small time part, but then it, it depends on what you consider India, because, like, in Indian Kashmir. maps we look at, you know, POC, like yeah. Pakistan occupied Kashmir POK, sorry, um, and that's what you know Afghanistan touches. But um, if you look at it from a global point of view, it's essentially all Pakistan. These little tiny points. <laughs> I mean, touches into China. Mm. Okay. Nepal, India, and then Pakistan. Yeah, so the, Afga- the Afghan-China border is, v- is very, very small. But I'm guessing they don't have like, you know, strong borders and stuff. And the reason why I bring this up is because this region has historically been a place where all countries have been disputing their borders. Yeah. So I think... Uh, so also part of the historic Silk Route. Yeah. So like yeah. Uh, in India, India and China had a war in the 1950s uh, because the Indian army found that uh, the Chinese army built like a significant road um, within the Indian borders. So that's what caused the war in the 50s. And this happened again a bunch of times in other places. And it's still happening right now in the northeastern region um, where Chinese helicopters tend to encroach into you know, Indian boundaries. And then the Indian army comes in and the, the Chinese army responds like, oops, sorry, our bad, yeah. and then goes back. And then, but then this happens every year. So, <laughs> you know? um, so yeah, the, the borders are constantly being tested across all of these spaces. So... Um, Maybe there is some credence to you know China coming in and no, but t- taking advantage I of it. I think this is the same thing, right? So wherever the British, the French, the Dutch, wherever they have been in, China now fills the void, right? Yeah. So Africa being the main example. Infrastructure, roads, fucking uh, raw materials, everything supplied by China in, uh, r- uh, in return of gold, oil, whatever. Yeah, whatever China wants. So everything gets contracted to Chinese companies, which are mostly state-run. So I think this is going to be the same thing. It's just a shift in, in like the country that is going to be plundering your resources. Mm. The new colonialism. <laughs> no. It's. I don't <laughs> think it's even colonialism. Is it's them sharing shit. Yeah, yeah, but. Like a lot of this is about you know exploit. Uh, you can't call it like capitalism, but it's also a lot about exploiting, uh, you know, resources from poorer countries, right? So, um, I think what, uh, who said it was like it's China's turn now? Yeah, you did. Like yeah, yeah, it's I China's turn now. It's That's like China's turn now. It was like you know back in the day it was the British before that it was the Portuguese then the French and you know this. Yeah. It's just the Dutch. The <laughs> po- yeah. Yeah. You know the Spaniards so and <laughs> like it's whoever, you know, always gun beats sword, right? Sure. Right. Yeah. So. Afghanistan is still the same thing and you know uh, the American media is talking about oh what about all the weapons that the American government is leaving behind fucking let's go back 20-30 years and think about all the weapons that the Mujahideen got where did they get it from yeah <laughs> they got yeah. it from the states it's it's like a mu- musical chairs but you're not part of it 
Yeah. Yeah. We are, we are we are not part of the music. And then you you only get whatever fucking information that the mainstream media wants to feed you, and if you follow that, then that's what you get. That's what yeah. you believe. Yeah. If you have your own brain, you go and do your own research. Yeah. And then you'll see uh, there are other possibilities. There are other things which are in the background. Yeah. Like okay, then you make a different. You make your mind up in a different way, maybe. Or you you might fall back to what the mainstream media said, depending on what you want to believe. Uh. Yeah. But Afghanistan is not not a simple place at all. No, no, no. So Very you know, complicated. You know, yeah. th- they used to have deep Hindu Buddhist traditions before, n- I think it was uh, 900, 900 CE. After that, you had the Muslim uh, invasion. Yeah. Right? Or the Muslim... Uh, explorers who came in from Persia, from from different parts of the Middle East, yeah. who wanted to come in and explore this area and maybe go into like Pakistan, modern day Pakistan in India. Yeah, and they brought along Islam and all, and that's why like it was pretty recent when the Buddha statues were exp- uh, imploded, yeah. right? Yeah, right. so that's right. actually a very short period of time, right? So, like, for all the influence that the Taliban has had in uh, Afghanistan, they actually only ruled the country for maybe about four from or 96, five years. From 96 yeah. to 2001. Yeah, so it's only been like four or five years, but within that time, a lot of damage was done, mm. and it was very much established that, you know, they would not be tolerant of any other communities outside of you know, and not just the Islamic ones, the, even within uh, the Muslim communities, you have the different, you know, affiliations and stuff. So, uh, like, Pashtun is one, but there's all these other, you know, subgroups. No, I think Pashtun is more of, uh, like, a group, like a vil- uh, dialect group. Yeah, it's, it's a, yeah. It's and a it's nothing to do with your religion, right? I think it's more of your cultural, 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 yeah. Yeah, no, cultural heritage. heritage. Yeah, but, like, I guess, I guess uh, what I feel is that a lot of these conflicts, yes, it comes under the guise of, like, religious ideology, but it's often territorialism, Yes, you know, rather than you know ideology and like even like within muslim countries there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of um um you know uh, what's the word what's the word partisanship there's a lot of yeah. you know uh, f- fractures between different communities based on where you're from belief. you have like the shia muslim divide you have the belief. you know yeah, it's not just belief right it's just about you know Practices are you are, are you like part of the in group or the out group like um Maybe an example I could provide is like within a Muslim country, and this is uh, Bahrain, which is in the Middle East. Yeah. Uh, this is where I grew up. Um, so Bahrain is like the only Shia majority country across the GACC outside of another one. I forget which one. So most uh, uh, GCC countries are Sunni majority, and um, Shia majority is not a thing. But Bahrain is Shia majority, but which has a Sunni royalty, right? Now, of course, outside of Bahrain, when you talk about the conflicts that have happened, especially in the 90s, the riots and stuff. Um, like it's I think it might be the y- the Yemenis as well. Uh, I believe so. I, I, I'm not familiar with the uh, yeah. Yemen, but the thing was that the uh, the riots that happened in Bahrain in the mid '90s was you know portrayed as a Shia Sunni conflict. Yeah. But the reality is that it wasn't a Shia Sunni conflict specifically. Yes. It was because the Sunni was the royalty and the Shia were the common people. Yeah. So it was essentially a class conflict than it was a religious one. You know, so it's not necessarily about belief. It's more about these people. These are the one percent, and they're oppressing. And they're us. oppressing the ninety nine percent. And actually, that still boils over now. Whenever Bahrain hosts the Formula One Grand Prix, oh, so there are okay. people who are always saying that what the fuck is happening, where you have the mind, the the people who are not Sunni mm-hmm. being oppressed by by the kingdom. Mm-hmm. But no one gives a fuck. Yeah, because like Bahrain, in many ways, also tries to um, um, suppress the voices of the locals in the sense that they want to be seen as, you know, uh, an expat haven. They want to be seen as a yeah. global destination, and uh, their their news media is also very heavily censored. Um, so a lot of these things you don't see, you don't hear. In fact, like if you were to live in an expat community in Bahrain, you are largely unaware of any of these ground level issues now for me it was slightly different because i didn't live in a fancy expat enclave or something like that um so like my part of the neighborhood was you know close to uh, like the the poorer part of the city and so you see some of these class struggles um and there was this other issue that a lot of the uh, local bahrainis were um uh you know so they're colloquially called irani 
even yeah. though they're not from like you know Iran or whatever. It's just that you know you're a brown skinned Arab, therefore you're you know uh, lower than us. Versus the the Sunni uh, you know community uh, were richer, more you know and stuff like that. So that divide was quite apparent. Like I remember, like in our neighborhood, uh, even in like in the mid '90s, we had um, you know donkey carts with you know kerosene uh, oh. stuff. You know, so like so uh, y- in order to get kerosene, you have to like buy it from these donkey carts. So you know that that's just how it was, right? And then so sometimes when I read about like Bahrain, you know, expat haven and stuff like that, I'm like, yeah, sure, it, it is, but you know, there's all these little undercurrents uh, that are not being talked about. Fucking expat haven compared to what? <laughs> <laughs> you, what are you comparing that to? What Afghanistan? Oh, no, no, fucking no. Iraq. No, no, but what, no, what? like like uh, in the Middle East, if you were to call a country an expat haven, you would say first thing UAE, right? Yeah, like yeah, Dubai, no, for sure, for sure. Abu Dhabi, or what? Or even to a certain extent, you would say Qatar, Doha is pretty all right, yeah. right? No, but like I guess uh, I, I mean th- because I, I wanted to bring this up because like a lot of the conflicts within uh, you know countries which are predominantly Muslim isn't necessarily because of you know religious conflict. It's class. it is territorial, it is class, yeah. And you see that in uh, in Afghanistan too. Unfortunately, um, you know a lot of our conversations you know are along the lines of religion, and especially in India. And that's where I feel like the conversations about the Afghan conflict right now is so interesting for me, because uh, you know when we, when I read the news here, it's about you know uh, the, the the terrorism, the rise in you know violence and stuff like that. In India, it's actually uh, grist for the the nationalist movement right now. So um, you guys are on cl- you guys do you know Clubhouse right? Yeah. The app, yeah. Right. So um, <laughs> do, do it, it <laughs> died a horrible death <laughs> everywhere else except for India. <laughs> oh, it's now huge it's in India. huge in India. <laughs> yeah. Clubhouse. Yeah, so it's Clubhouse. huge. And like personally, I find it great because it's like I like that noise. But 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 <laughs> it's also funny because some people <laughs> consider Clubhouse in India as like a divisive <laughs> fucking voice. Oh, it is. It is. Yeah, so it's like oh, fucking uh, people who hate uh, the the nation that's called Bharat. Yeah. Uh, and all everything oh these people are on on clubhouse like you know they are just making it seem like it's white or black yeah but like at the same time it's very polarized right like oh uh, people on clubhouse that means they are trying to take over the country yeah clubhouse came and went went so quickly though well no india is like no everywhere else but india but india so now india it's massive it's it's really huge yeah so i so i'm on clubhouse a lot because uh, that's kind of my way to get the ground sentiment in india right now so there's two things that you see in India as part of the Afghan crisis. Number one, there's an Afghan community in India, and the grief is palpable because yeah. you know they have family who are still in Afghanistan, and a lot of the Afghan community in India are refugees, and so you know they're kind of struggling to do with how it works. So the Indian government is committed to you know helping them and stuff. So there's a lot of sympathy for the community. On the other side, you have clubhouse rooms like, and this is the one that I joined yesterday. Uh, the room is called. How do we stop our good Hindu women from being Afghan sex slaves? <laughs> so, so wow. <laughs> so, you know, so this is where by making <laughs> them Indian sex slaves. <laughs> you know, but it's like this is yeah. where all the virulent Hindu nationalists are coming out of the woodwork and they're like, "Oh no, this is the second Islamic invasion. Oh no, this is the, you know, they're stealing our women. Oh no, you know, a Hindu genocide." And a lot of these beats are very similar to like the white supremacy movements if you right. think about it. So, um, so I joined that, you know, out of curiosity. And Black Lives Matter as well, same thing. Yeah. You know, but the thing is that so there's all these people who are convinced that you know th- they are they are being marginalized, and so what's also the worry right now in India is that um, it might exacerbate the already prevalent Islamophobia, especially in the BJP dominated mm. regions. Yeah. So for context, BJP is a party that's you know ideologically motivated, and you know we have this whole Hindu supremacy thing going on, um, and look, uh, I'm. Personally, uh, I'm born Hindu. I don't identify as well, uh, Hindu, but um, you know, uh, Hindu nationalism is turning out to be a bit of a problem. Um, so you know, so that's the conversation that I'm seeing like in India right now. So I don't know, Afghan sex slaves, man. Like, sorry, what? Yeah. Uh, how not to uh, <laughs> steal? How not <laughs> Afghan not steal our, our Indian sex slaves? Yeah, you know, and it's, uh, yes. it's no, they it's they so have, weird. but but Afghanistan, Pakistan, India. All these countries within the region, right, all have the same problems. Right. If you were to watch a documentary made by the the British Bureau, it's on YouTube. I might link it to you boys. You go and check it out. Women even being on stage was something foreign to Afghani men. Right. Who were not university educated, mm. who were not living 
in the city who had uh, interactions with foreigners. So these people were like, why is this lady on stage dancing or singing? Mm. She should be in the kitchen. Right. She should be looking after my kids. Yeah. Like that that is the thing. They they were in the documentary they were actually looking at the lady dancing. They were like, What is she doing there? But they kept quiet because that was the proper decorum to follow through with because you had guests right there. Yeah. You didn't want to ruin the s- the fucking atmosphere for everyone. So yeah. you keep quiet. But that's the same idea that's prevalent in Pakistan, mm. in India for a very long time. Yeah. Right. It comes I think it comes down to ignorance as well, right? And a lack of like uh understanding what different cultures how different cultures operate. Because uh, they're living their own sphere of like uh isolation. So like for many centuries this has been the uh, MO that yes, wom- that yes, women yes, should yes, not yes. should not be in public light, they should always be in the background. And yeah. then and then now in the twenty first century or twentieth century they're like, Oh, it's the normal thing to do. But Yeah, it's multifaceted. Yeah. Like like an example I'll give you is what Jordan Peterson said, right? About the struggles women faced without modern technology. By modern technology, I'm talking about uh, fucking sanitary pads, mm. refrigeration, clean toilets. Yeah. These are modern technologies which actually helped women step out of the house. Right. Without this, they were really... Yeah backwards they couldn't do anything they only had one job and one job was to reproduce look after your kin yeah that was that was it it goes back thousands of years to the hunter gatherer kind of mentality yes, like. yes yeah so till there was some form of progress in yeah. this manner women were backwards but in the f- in the in the um uh in the first world country especially in like the states and the uk it was world war one world war two, two. actually world war, war two, two. Yeah, where where all the men were being sent to the fourth, uh, into the battlefield, and then the women had to step into the industries to build fucking planes, guns, ammo, tanks, and tanks everything, and yeah. all that shit. And then that yeah. was the age where women was like, "Fuck this! I'm gonna, I want to work for my yeah. money." Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bec- because they were the ones who were working and providing for their family, whoever yeah. was left behind, whoever couldn't go yeah, to the front of the theater. And it's a study of how like the 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 women working in these industries actually helped the US w- win the war. Win, yeah. win, win World War Two because they weren't supplying the the oh. boys and the troops. No, the but those lines. articles were written by women, lah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe no, but but there were stats though, like uh, like in, in in like Detroit and all these like industrial cities, like the amount of women coming in, and then they have stats of like how how much ammo and 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 vehicles and equipment were being sent. Yeah, to but the you know, yeah. ammo in a case and ammo being shot out of a gun, two different. Yeah. Two separate things, lah. Yeah, I mean, so the ammo in the case not going to kill anyone, lah. Yeah, but not going to kill any Nazi. But the reason, the but good the th- ammo in a gun being shot yeah. out by a man. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, good it's good that men are. It's good that men is on the battlefront of because women uh, we have too many emotions. Mm. They like, let me talk to this guy. <laughs> let me try to understand his feelings, and then before that they stab, yeah. and then they die, and I say, oh shit, yeah. No, I'm on my period, I'm not going to do anything. Yeah. <laughs> I'm feeling emotional right now. I just want to talk about my feelings. You said that my outfit doesn't look good. I am not happy yeah. with you. Why did you paint my, my face with, with camel cream? I don't want to do that. I have makeup on. <laughs> it's going to ruin my lipstick. I should not do this. I'm going to get pimples. What the hell are yeah. you talking about? I don't want to live in the jungle. I don't, I, I don't have a proper bathroom. Yeah, sleep in the dirt. What are you talking about? Yeah, there's spiders here. There's snakes. No, cannot. Uniform will be sub- supplied by DNG. You know. Yeah. Why this one got no brand? Uh? Why this one no, not LV? I only wear LV. No, but you see, one of those things that the Nazis got it right, they got Hugo Boss to design the outfits. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, um, um, is Hugo Boss? No, okay. Like th- no, okay, no. So, Hugo Boss didn't design the outfit. It was designed oh, by they, a member they, of... They, they, they made the outfits. They, yeah. They made manufactured the outfits. They manufactured the outfits, yeah. So, wow. the yeah. outfit was actually designed by this, uh, no, this former... Na- uh, part, part of the Nazi regime, this, this guy, lah. I can't remember his name, some German name. But they outsource it to Hugo Boss and then they manufacture the outfits. Yeah. Yeah. So they, wow. So okay. the Germans went to fight in style. Yeah. And <laughs> on that very long note. On uh, Hugo Boss. On Hugo Boss. Boss. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I hope you find the Lots of Lobang and sponsor us. Being the brand of the people. Yeah. We, you, we need suits. Here, we need suits <laughs> for this. Um, yeah, here. please. Uh, if, any, if any of you have not listened to Windows Podcast, please check out uh, Living in Lion City. 
with uh, Rindo. Rindo has uh, been uh, has been here has been, has joined us for our podcast like multiple episodes, right? Two or yeah. three episodes yep. before. A couple of times. Yeah, one of it was uh, the Sovereign Boys. If I'm yeah. not wrong, during 2020. Sovereign lockdown. Boys. Then we had another one, the History of Singapore. The History of Singapore. Yeah, History yeah. of Singapore. History of Singapore. Yeah. And then Check we, out those episodes. We did one on uh, xenophobia. Xenophobia yeah. as well. Yeah. 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 He's got a series on that on zero yes. xenophobia in Singapore. Very enlightening. Yeah. Three part episode, right? If I'm not wrong. Which yeah. doesn't exist, by the way. Uh, four, <laughs> four, four, four parts, including us. <laughs> oh, it's four parts. Yeah, it's four parts. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah, right. yeah. He does a really, really detailed <laughs> deep, deep dive yeah. into xenophobia. Well researched, and by well researched, I'm saying that he did do his research. Went out to all the watering holes, spoke to people. Yeah. Got their true fucking intent. Because after a few drinks, <laughs> yeah, everyone tells speaks the truth, right? Yeah. The truth comes out. The truth comes out. <laughs> yeah, you did the proper <laughs> work. <laughs> you did the proper work. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah uh, that's why I'm here. So and and <laughs> check out uh, patreoncom slash for Wait, more. Wait, and you still have your uh, the animated the comic? Do you um, still is it still running? Uh, no, I haven't been doing stuff in a long time. Chasu um, samosa, Chasu right? Samosa, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. Hopefully, I'll pick it up again. So, I haven't been doing it much on the podcast lately, but I don't know. Let's let's see what happens over the no, next couple of months. Just go and check it out on Instagram. Yeah, right? it's still yeah. around. So, yeah, Chelsea and, and, and also, uh, Rindo's a proud uh, a sponsor of the Lots of Lobang. So, yeah. sign up to patreon.com slash Lots of Lobang. <laughs> yeah. And uh, donate and money to us so we can get new mics. And, and that's how you can earn your space here on, the, on oh this chair. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. These fine folks. Yeah. So <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. Coming straight from the mouth of our sponsor. <laughs> yeah. He loves it. You will love it. Actual sponsor. The other sponsor will be anyone willing to sponsor our beer. Yeah. Uh, the a- Asia Pacific Brewery. Speak yeah. Or the vaccine. Or the vaccine. Or the, uh, we call it the vaccine. Yeah. 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 All right. Ciao. 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 Ciao.